Well, thank you. Uh, thank you for inviting me. It's always a pleasure to be at uh, Big Hill for uh, many reasons. We actually in Montreal, and, uh, and also with people keep reminding me that uh, UBC is celebrating its 100th uh, anniversary uh, this year. And um, I don't know if most people at McGill know that, but actually uh, UBC is uh, the child of McGill, because actually it started at Miguel West, you know, in the, until it became in 1915 uh, University of British Columbia. And I've also been told that apparently we're the grandchild of the University of Glasgow, because <laughs> Miguel was very much... Uh, so apparently there's lots of similar things about the way uh, UBC is run and University of Glasgow and Miguel is run thanks to this uh, lineage. Okay, well, enough uh, <laughs> talking about this. So. Uh, this paper is joint with uh, my colleague Nicole Fortin at uh, UBC and one of our uh, former students, Javier Torres, who uh, finished his PhD uh, about two years ago and now he's back in uh, Lima, the uh, Universidad Pacifico. And I should say we've been uh, working on this uh, paper for a while, but right now we're just completing uh, a revision, uh, so that's actually a great time to get um, feedback. All right. Well, my clicker was working uh, uh, last time. Uh, oh, you just on the screen once it goes out that window not click away, so might not have noticed. Oh. Oh, not that one. No, one. not this one. Because <laughs> you know, I was told not to uh, touch <laughs> Oh, thank you, Chris. Yeah. All right. <laughs> yeah, whatever people tell me to do, uh, not to do, I, I do it. Uh, child at heart. Um, all right. So the motivation for this uh, paper is that, you know, as is well known, um, when immigrants come uh, to a country like Canada, you know, depending on the age where they come, especially around their 20s, um, you know, in some cases they'll have done their education in their own country, in others they will actually uh, complete their education in, uh, in Canada. And, um, and in most, there's a huge literature, of course, on the effect of uh, you know the the wage differential between immigrants and, uh, and uh, Canadian-born, uh, important trends over time. Uh, but actually, this issue of the role of where you got your uh, education has not been investigated in uh, that much detail. So, in one sense, that's uh, one of the key purposes of our uh, paper there. Because, uh, you know, actually the bits and pieces of evidence from other countries suggest that uh, it can actually matter a lot, you know, where you got your uh, education, depending of, you know, it can depend on two factors. Number one, just the quality of education. It could just be that, uh, you know, uh, engineering degree in India and engineering degree in, uh, in Canada, just in terms of content of what you're learning, uh, may be uh, quite different. But it can also be uh, an issue about the portability of, uh, of a degree, and, um, and that can actually depend on the field of study. So uh, one example, for instance, if you have a, a degree in education, but in a language other than French and English, and then you want to teach here in French and English, it may be that the, uh, the uh, education that you got in your uh, home country is not portable, or there can be some institutional reasons uh, for that too. I mean, we're not going to take a huge stand on that, but you know that's actually two reasons why uh, the the source of where you got your education can have uh, can make a big difference. Okay, uh, I don't need to remind people here, you know, that given this presentation at uh, other places, that Canada has a large Im immigrant population, over 20 percent of the population uh, in Canada. But you know, one reason why this issue about where you got your education is quite important is that. Over time, there's been, of course, a huge change in the composition of uh, immigrants. Uh, actually, in British Columbia, interestingly, um, there's still a large group of uh, British immigrants, but you know the average age of these immigrants is probably about 60 or uh, something like that. While all the more recent immigrants, uh, you know, especially in British Columbia, but you know, more generally in Canada, uh, come from uh, from Asia. And you can see right away. Uh, the, what the issue could be, you know, as well, <laughs> talking about the University of Glasgow <laughs> earlier. Well, yeah, I guess if you have a diploma from the University of Glasgow, it should be pretty similar to a UBC uh, uh, degree. While if you study in India instead, it could be uh, quite different. So that's uh, 
where you got your education could actually explain where there's why there's been actually a big shift over time in the uh, the, uh, the earnings of immigrants. Okay, we're going to be using uh, data from the 2006 census for this uh, study. Uh, one of the most many advantage of the uh, of the census Canadian census is that starting in '86, um, that's the first year where there were questions introduced about field of study. So that's actually quite important for these portability issues I was mentioning earlier. Because uh, you could think that depending on the field of study, your human capital may be more or less uh, portable. Okay, and uh, I guess I have a slide coming up, but you know the reason why we're interested in the 2006 census is that that's actually the first time where a question was added to the census asking about where did you do your uh, your education. Actually, more uh, to be more precise, it's essentially your highest level of education. Let's see. You have a master's, so then in the census, you ask you, well, that master's, uh, in which country did you uh, get that uh, diploma? So it was a brand new in 2006. And uh, since I tend to talk too much, you know, I always like to put my uh, uh, results in a nutshell here. And I should also say that since I'm an economist, you should just feel free to, uh, uh, I guess I can say, interrupt me any, any, any time you want, but you know, uh, just ask questions throughout the, the, the presentation. Well, yeah, totally fine with that. Um, so actually, uh, one of the main finding in one sense, in the key number here, is that when you just look at the earnings gap between uh, immigrants and, well, natives, or uh, just in the Canadian context, I should see uh, Canadian born, I should uh, change this, uh, this slide. Sorry about this. Uh, uh, the, the result is that actually uh, a big, that's Americans always talk of immigrants versus uh, natives, but that's a different meaning here. Um, and you know, depending on the specification, uh, I guess the key number here is that actually a large fraction of the, the gap between immigrants and uh, the Canadian born can be attributed to where people uh, study. And essentially the way of thinking about it is just to say that if you look at an immigrant uh, from India, you know, the gap is actually uh, much bigger between, for the same level of education between the earnings of that immigrant and the Canadian born, if this immigrant got his or her schooling in India as opposed to uh, in Canada. So it's basically a, a big factor. And you'll see that lots of the results kind of uh, correspond to the basic intuition that you would have that if you have actually a degree from Glasgow or from the US, UK in general, Western Europe, uh, we tend to find that there's very little difference between uh, the earnings that you get for a degree like that compared to a Canadian degree. While for some other countries, a gap can be uh, very, uh, very big. And, um, and, and actually, uh, this can be especially important. Uh, one interesting finding is that it's actually a little more important for women than for men and also for uh, older uh, immigrants. And you'll see at the end of the, the, the presentation, you know, I'm going to go back to this question of combining field of study with uh, location of study. And you'll see that the results, once again, are actually quite uh, intuitive. So uh, I like to think of a math degree as something that should be fairly universal, you know, with, uh, you know holding quality of schooling uh, constants, you know, whether you study math. Uh, in India and the UK or in Canada shouldn't uh, make much of a difference. Well, the degree in education, for instance, could be a quite different uh, <coughs> degree in India, you know, wanting to be a teacher in India and then you end up in, uh, in Canada instead. So you'll see that the results kind of line up. But, uh, yes. Yeah, yeah, it's all going to be a tertiary education because I, sh I should say that. Uh, the detailed question, the Canadian census, uh, both about the field of study and location of study, it's all for the tertiary education, so more than high school. So it can be actually uh, kind of a trade diploma, you know, uh, or, or then the equivalent of a CEGEP or a community college, uh, bachelor's degree. Or <laughs> yeah, no, no, that's actually a very, uh, very good question. Um, there's um, there's actually uh, fairly uh, little that you can do with this particular uh, data. Just 
cross um, cross sectional data. So um, and and I think actually even though we don't have full information about this, you know, I, I think in many cases what what happens is um, you know uh, I think that that's actually an important question, and, and really, you know, I, I don't have a good answer for. Uh, that one, but you know, the, the key difference you should think of, uh, you know, say an Indian student who comes here with uh, do a degree at McGill, something like that, and and you think that uh, this individual is probably going to be uh, quite different from uh, you know the individual who does a degree in an Indian university and uh, comes here. I mean, one sense, one spin where this sensitivity may not be that uh, that important is that. Well, if you just think in terms of immigration policy, uh, you know, right now our immigration policy, you know, the, the point system is only based on uh, the, the degree that you got, you know, degree appointment, regardless of whether it was obtained uh, at McGill or uh, in India. And certainly what our results suggest is that, uh, you know, you should probably put much more points on an Indian immigrant Kenyan degree than another. And actually that could be for a mix of selectivity, you know, you get the better immigrants uh, that way. And also that the human capital is uh, higher. But you know, uh, I mean we've we've tried to tell about, about different ways of getting at the selectivity here. I mean um, and uh, as I said just with the cross sectional data, you know I'm hoping that by, you know, uh, matching now, there's actually more opportunity of matching uh, census data with longitudinal learnings uh, data to at least get at the question of uh, people who come here. Because you know, there's actually also a selectivity bias uh, over time that some of the immigrants who don't do uh, quite as well uh, tend to leave their country. But you know, the short answer is that there's really uh, not much. Yeah. Yeah, actually, you know, that's a great question. I mean, I, I don't know. Um, I mean, there's quite limited. Uh, I mean, one thing that I can say is that when you look at the kind of results that we get, and then you compare that to uh, uh, other measures of people who've tried to come up with comparison of the quality of education across country based on resources, etc. I mean, there clearly seems to be a close correlation. Between, in one version of the paper, we were actually correlating, you know, the uh, the effect of the the country where you got your education with from the quality of schooling, and they were actually uh, strongly correlated. So, you know, all I can say is that I think part of the results are really capturing difference in the education system as opposed to uh, selection. But uh, and it's actually generally hard to get good. Uh, Data that tells you are the people immigrating. There's actually now a couple of papers. There's been a couple of papers for Mexico because that's actually a big issue there. Uh, but yeah, so all we've done actually is just correlating other measures of quality of schooling, and we found that they are related. So I, I think some of the effect is not just the selection. But that's an important point. Okay, um, so. Let me go quickly over this one because I guess this particular audience will know a lot about uh, the way the, the, the system works. And actually, I just made a point, which is that uh, actually in our current point system, I mean, yeah, at least you know the system that was in place in 2006, because there's actually been uh, some change lately. It's not that the point system doesn't work anymore. Even if you have your points, you know, uh, you, we're actually moving. Towards the U.S. system, where if you have actually a job lineup, you know, uh, it's much easier to, uh, to to immigrate than if you just have the points. But certainly back in 2006, you can think of uh, we had just a standard kind of uh, uh, point system. And as I said, uh, you know, education and intended occupation uh, are important elements of, of that. But you know, there's essentially when you look at education, all it's you know, what degree did you have, where you got this degree is not at all uh, taken uh, into account. Okay, and actually uh, another point anyway is that 
most of people who come actually in Canada, which kind of don't really come under the point system, I, I can actually show you this uh, pie chart here. Uh, so that was actually data in 2006 because we're using a 2006 data. <coughs> you see there's only about 22% uh, of uh, immigrants coming to Canada who really come <coughs> into the point system because you have a bunch of people, 33% uh, who are actually the, uh, either the spouse or dependents of people who are coming under uh, the point system. And then you have the, a bigger, a big category of the family reunification, if you want. You know, that would be more like the grandparents coming in, not the, the direct uh, dependence of the uh, person coming under the, uh, the point system. But actually, uh, it's just to keep in mind that even though there's a point system where education should play a, a big role there, it's only a fraction of people who come under uh, the, the point system. And I guess my other graph here that I need to uh, put, uh, uh, it's not really up to date, but you know, it goes on till 2006, and I'll use the excuse that we're looking at the uh, uh, Canadian census of uh, 2006. And this is actually just told uh, immigration, you know, the, uh, uh, if you actually wonder, so uh, the Britain uh, is actually this uh, dark category at the, the bottom. And as I was saying, you know, uh, there was actually still lots of immigration from Britain in the 50s and uh, 50s, early 70s, but much less lately. Actually, France has overtaken uh, Britain actually as a source of uh, immigration, as anybody <laughs> knows this in the around here. Uh, <laughs> hard to miss, in the, especially on the plateau. Um, all right, um, so. The other interesting one, so, well, you have the US here, you know, as is well known, that's kind of the blue um, uh, bar here. It's actually well known that back in the late 60s, early 70s, this was not all draft workers, actually, but you know, uh, there were lots of immigrants coming from the US and they went down over time. And uh, we keep hearing that depending on who wins the next election, uh, you can get uh, more people coming in. But I think these are the really empty threats. You know, I, all these friends go, oh, Bush gets reelected in 2004. I'm out of here. Yeah, of course, nobody was out of uh, <laughs> there. But OK, uh, jokes aside, the, the big uh, part of this uh, picture here is this big, uh, I'm really not good with college, I guess it's a burgundy uh, zone here. So that's actually an uh, immigrant from, uh, from Asia. So if you actually look at the recent immigrants to Canada, I mean, it's uh, radical change. There was very little immigration from Asia until the, essentially the point system was introduced in the late, uh, late 60s. And then over time, it has come to dominate. And you know, people, of course, have looked at this issue a lot. You know, how change in the country of origin can explain the uh, immigrants' wage gap. But I guess here what we're adding is now it's not only the fact that immigrants come from different countries, but then uh, if they bring their education from their own country, it does matter a lot whether they're coming from India or the UK. OK, so um, um, getting to the, the data per se, the 2006 uh, in census, actually, we could redo this all analysis with the 2011. Yeah, but uh, <laughs> uh, I, I'm not sure. You know, honestly, I've, for the the paper I'm going to present <coughs> in the afternoon, we've actually run a bunch of things with the uh, NHS. <coughs> when you estimate wage regression, which is what we're mostly doing here, uh, I mean, it doesn't look like it's having such a kind of a huge impact, but uh, but still, uh, without to be cleaner, just to see the, the real census, because then we don't have to worry about uh, all kinds of <coughs> issues linked to uh, non-response in, uh, in particular. Uh, but the good news, of course, is that a few years from now, we'll be able to do that again with uh, <coughs> census again. Uh, so uh, the, we're using the 20 person uh, sample, so that's essentially the, the master file. And all this work was done actually at the DCI uh, RDC or RDC, StatScan RDC on campus at, uh, at UBC. And this is uh, obviously quite important when you start cutting the data by, uh, by 
countries. I mean, for India and China, it's not such an issue because these are big countries that get lots of uh, immigrants. But you know, if you think that there is important differences in diversification uh, across country, even within you know Pakistan compared to Bangladesh compared to uh, India, etc. You know, I think the the big sample is really uh, helpful. Um, so uh, we have some kind of sample cuts. It doesn't matter uh, so much, but we only look at the um, workers, individuals aged, well, actually workers aged 20 to uh, 64, uh, full-time workers uh, with positive earnings. And the reason for the, the full-time is that you know, labor economists often, we like to have actually a measure of hourly wages so to uh, total earnings that mix labor supply issues with uh, the wages. We cannot quite do that in the census because uh, we don't know how many hours people have worked, but we know actually whether they were full-time workers or, or not. And I should also add that the 2006 census was actually the first year where they allowed you to use income tax data instead of uh, self-reporting the, uh, the income. So actually in that sample, uh, more than 80% of people, their their income and earnings are coming from the tax record. So uh, so in one sense, it's actually a, a match data set a match between, for most people, match between the census and the tax record. So it's a very uh, uh, high quality uh, admin data. Um, and uh, in response to a question I got earlier, uh, oh, uh, at the end, I guess, yeah, I don't know, yeah. Uh, about uh, tertiary education, so the, the key questions we're working with only being asked for people who have more than a high school degree, so that's why we're uh, limiting that. And we're trimming a bit the bottom of the distribution because you always have some uh, weird observation that if you, uh, you know, someone who worked for uh, 52 weeks uh, full time and then reports, then the earnings that you get is like $100, which would be, uh, I don't know. 10 cents an hour or something like that. So we kind of trimmed the bottom of the distribution, uh, saying that if it's less than half of the minimum wage, it must be just a uh, recording error. OK. Um, so something else we do in the, the paper. Um, so I told you about this, I mean, this question in the sensor that was added for the first time in 2006, essentially just ask you, uh, you know, your uh, highest diploma. Uh, degree or diploma, you know, where did you get it? And uh, actually for people from Canada, you'll know the province where you, uh, you got it. Uh, but you know, if you didn't get your education in Canada, they ask you for the country. Uh, and one thing we do in the paper that's kind of, um, kind of a recent addition is to compare more systematically uh, that new measure that we have with what you could do if you didn't have this measure. So. Uh, in the past, there was a nice paper by Rachel Friedberg uh, back in the Journal of Labor Economics in 2000, where she essentially used an imputation procedure. And uh, let me just give you an example. So if you see in the data someone who's a university graduate as a BA, for instance, and uh, you know this person immigrated in Canada at age 18, it's actually important to say that uh, the uh, what in the census what they mean by immigrating is when you became a permanent resident. Okay, it's actually quite important for foreign students um, for a reason I'm going to mention in a second. But you know, if you have someone who came at age 18 and has a, a BA, uh, then this procedure with the sense the Friedberg procedure would just say, okay, well let's say you started at age six schooling, so by age 18. You were in grade 12, which means that uh, your BA, by the time you did your BA after age 18, you were all in Canada, so we're going to impute you as being a Canadian university graduate. Okay? Well, if you have someone, same person with uh, a BA, uh, but who immigrated at age 25, you know, this uh, imputation procedure will say, well, normally people would complete their BA by age 22 or so. So if you uh, immigrated to Canada at age 25, must mean that you got your uh, BA in your home country. But this is actually uh, problematic for uh, two reasons, or well, for a, a number of reasons. The last bullet point here is that, uh, well, it could be that after immigrating to Canada, you decide to do another degree. And actually, you see that immigrants at a given age are more likely to be enrolled in school than the Canadian born. So it could simply be that you come to Canada, you realize, oh, it would be really useful to get 
some other diploma. Maybe not in your CBA, but it could be a, a, a trade certificate or something like that. So in that case, this imputation approach is going to actually uh, miss that. And it will also uh, miss, uh, uh, I think I've, did I, yeah, yeah, immigrants who were older when they got their degree or, or were students in Canada who immigrated later. I mean, that's actually a fairly common thing, at least at, uh, uh, at UBC. Lots of or students, uh, graduate students in particular, you know, they are studying at UBC and then eventually they are eligible to become permanent resident. But by the time they become permanent resident, they are older, they are almost done with their degree. And if you use the station approach, you would say, oh no, this person must have studied uh, abroad. I suspect that's one of the most important things here. And finally, uh, it also misses out, that's not a big problem, but you know, there's Kenyans or other immigrants who've actually studied uh, abroad. Uh, in the case of immigrants, the, this third country will be typically the US or the UK. So it could be like this Indian immigrant who studied in the UK and then immigrated to uh, Canada. So uh, unless you have this direct question from the chosen <laughs> census about where you got your school, you would completely uh, miss that. OK, so um, in some earlier presentation, I had a bunch of descriptive tables, uh, but then typically what always, always happens is uh, that, well, we're halfway through and uh, I've not started uh, showing any numbers. So uh, let me just. I'll just show you the, the most important numbers and uh, tell you about a few other things. Well, obviously, when you look at the census, when people, because you have the information that came in, what was their age, and consistent with the graph I showed earlier, I mean, there's been a huge shift uh, over time from uh, Europe in general, the UK in particular, to uh, Asian immigrants. Uh, and actually, in our data, I mean, I have more detailed uh, tables about that. Uh, you get that actually a fairly high fraction of immigrants got their uh, highest education in, uh, in, um, in Canada. And actually, there's something that we do, um, I guess maybe it was in the previous table, you know, we only look at people who came to Canada at age 15 or older. So uh, you know, of course, these things would not mean much for someone who uh, came to Canada as a child. Uh, well, that's well known. We control in our regression analysis for the province where you live, if it's in a big city, because is well known, students tend to at least at first to go to uh, bigger cities. Uh, I mean, immigrants are actually older and more educated than uh, Kenyan born. Um, and um, as I as I will just show you in a, in a second, uh, even at age, uh, even for immigrants who come say at age 29, you still have about 30 percent of these immigrants. When you look in the data you figure out that they've actually done their highest uh, diploma in Canada. So it's either they were a uh, Kenyan student earlier on and came back, or they got another uh, degree later on. OK, do you see anything uh, on this uh, table? Uh, well, let me actually uh, show you something where you do see something. Uh, so uh, this is actually uh, showing you depending on the age of our arrival. And that's essentially the age when you immigrated to Canada. But that's the point when you became a uh, Permanent uh, resident, and uh, this line here, you know, the dotted line, is actually showing you using this direct information from the census, you know, the fraction of immigrants depending on age of arrival who uh, got their highest diploma in, um, in Canada, and that's what I was telling you that even at age 29, you still get about 30 percent of immigrants who. Uh, uh, got their highest degree or diploma in, uh, in Canada. So you see it goes down over time, but you know, this uh, number I was mentioning, the 56% of immigrants, and you can see it's uh, roughly speaking the uh, average value of this uh, the line here. And just to con yeah. It's mostly actually the, uh, the BAs, and uh, you can actually see it from this line here, because you know that's the one that uses this imputation procedure, the, the Friedberg one. And essentially, you see this very uh, small line here. It's saying, well, OK, uh, you, you have people who immigrated. Uh, I mean, the, the reason this line is still uh, not zero is that actually if, you have, if you're a PhD, and uh, if you have a PhD and you immigrated at age 24, 
just essentially impute you as saying, oh, you got to a higher certification in Canada. But you see it's actually a very small part of it. So, you know, the lion's share of this difference here is really coming from the, the BA or... Uh, and keep in mind here, you all even have these trade certificates that can be actually pretty short uh, uh, diplomas. Yeah. Um, well, yeah. Just the lab. So that's the uh, limitation. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That's well. No, actually, the the question is the uh, not huh? not necessarily the last uh, the highest. I don't know how they break ties. You know, if you have two masters or uh, only in that case uh, the or two PhDs. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, I have. And, and deans and you know uh, all over. but my friends have learned over the years that uh, you know, my friends are not all representative of the <laughs> population. Okay, um, okay, I'll tell you what these numbers are since you cannot um, uh, see them. But um, see, in most cases, uh, you know these numbers actually reflect what you saw in this uh, other picture that. You know, for instance, okay, let me tell you China, you know, which is an important uh, country. If you're only looking at the age of arrival using the Friedberg approach, you would conclude that 20% of uh, Chinese immigrants study in their own country. Well, actually, it's only 30% when you look at the uh, census data. And you also, so it's actually 50% of the Chinese immigrants got uh, their highest uh, degree in Canada, but almost 10% of them also got their degree, uh, what we call the study abroad here, is in a country other than their home country or uh, Canada. So actually in the case of India, 6% and uh, China, it's actually, uh, or Pakistan, um, it's actually, these things are actually uh, quite important. Okay, um, so a distribution of field of study, actually uh, I can widen this uh, a little bit. But that's, that's still a little bit better. Um, so um, since I'm going to show at the end the uh, results by field of study, I mean there's not a huge difference between the Kenyan born and the uh, the, uh, the immigrants, but you know there's some notable ones. So for instance, education. You know, uh, immigrants, uh, not the immigrant. Uh, uh, fix my uh, my slides. Uh, Actually, education is one of the fields where uh, immigrants are less likely to have a high diploma in. And not surprisingly, if you look at this, so these are actually broad uh, categories of field of study. I think that's the one digit from the census. So if you look at this one, computer science, math, uh, et cetera, so you, that's actually well known that lots of uh, the STEM kind of field, you know, there's a disproportion of uh, immigrants. And you see that in the data, it's actually uh, 11% of immigrants are uh, in these fields compared to only 5% of the Kenyan born. And same thing, you know, these uh, architecture, engineering, engineer, technician. So engineering tends to be bachelor's level, and engineering technician would be uh, more the, let's see, if you have a, you know, well, here in Quebec, you know, uh, in CEGEP, if you do uh, engineering, uh, Uh, there would be uh, there too, but not surprisingly, you see that there's a much bigger concentration of uh, immigrants. So these are actually some of the uh, big differences. Uh, if you actually look at the health sector, it's actually uh, quite balanced. Uh, we hear a lot about doctors, but actually, if you look more broadly in the uh, health sector, you have lots of uh, uh, immigrants here. Yeah, actually, we, uh, that's something we have not, so the mismatch, I mean, there's, uh, there's evidence that there's a little more mismatch in because you have data on occupation and field of study. And there's always some uh, mismatch both for the Canadian born and uh, immigrants. And from what I recall, there's actually a little more mismatch in, uh, for immigrants than, uh, uh, than for the, the Canadian born. And actually, uh, that's something we were trying to exploit a little more. 
For instance, you had this uh, dramatic thing that happened in, in Canada, Garnet people in <coughs> that uh, stuff scan. I worked on that. You know, when you had the dot com bus in the uh, 2000, I mean, one of the main reasons why immigrants were actually doing badly shortly after that is that we brought in a lot of uh, you know, engineers, computer scientists, uh, etc. in the late uh, 1990s to get no need to uh, to yeah. <laughs> infer. Um, so and uh, so you know these stories of the uh, highly educated immigrants driving taxis. I think it's kind of always overblown. But in that particular uh, case, uh, the evidence team show that's one thing that happened. You know, it's uh, let's say you're a computer scientist, and uh, then dot com boom, kind of uh, the the crash comes in, it looks like it was much easier for the Kenyan-born scientists to find some kind of other jobs, while uh, I think for the immigrants, they should be a little more linked uh, uh, to their, uh, to their they, they tend to suffer a little more from the mismatch. Than the, anyway, we can't explore that in that much detail, but with these data, you can actually uh, definitely get at that. Uh, okay, so the estimation, uh, Basically, just going to run a bunch of uh, regressions with uh, standard controls for um, experience education. I'm going to show you separate results for men and uh, women, or when it's going to be pooled, just going to be a gender uh, dummy. And uh, some of the first results I'm going to show you, essentially, it's a bit like a decomposition. Uh, we're looking at the effect of being an immigrant on uh, log earnings here. And, and then you can see that when you start adding information about where you got your, uh, your degree, you can see what's actu actually happening to the, uh, the immigrant effect. And one way of doing it is simply to say, well, regardless of your level of education, we're going to put a set of uh, dummies for the, the countries in which you got your uh, education. And, uh, and essentially, the, the way the identification works, if you want to uh, think about uh, Indian immigrants, so uh, the main effect of being an Indian immigrant is going to be captured by this, uh, uh, whether you're an immigrant dummy, but then there's going to be an extra effect you know, of the location of study that's essentially going to be captured by comparing Indian immigrants who are educated in Canada versus the others. So that's uh, roughly the uh, system. Yes, no, that's right. I mean, uh, essentially, it's um, what we do, we, <clears throat> we do a little bit of an, an imputation procedure for work experience in Canada. Because I should say that this is actually an important point. Because, uh, several studies have shown that, um, you know, particularly my uh, colleague David Green, who is uh, Worswick, have shown that, you know, in recent years, it looks as if. Uh, your experience that you got in your country for immigrating is almost worth zero in the Canadian uh, labor market. So uh, we're definitely going to estimate a variety of models, and some of them we're actually going to have this uh, this interaction. So we're going to be separating uh, the uh, effect of uh, work experience in with the exp uh, work experience in a foreign country. And then in that case, I guess you should think of uh, <clears throat> the effect that we're getting, uh, education effect is for, uh, location of study effect is for an immigrant who just came in literally in, uh, in Canada, but uh, yeah, 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 that's right, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, well, I mean, as I said, um, yeah, 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 that's right, yeah. Yeah. 
No, no, that's right. Yeah. No, I think you're right. Actually, that in one sense, it's a, it's only a, a bound on these uh, these effects. I should. Um, yeah, because well, essentially the um, so we have the effect of the experience of in Canada that we get actually from the, the Canadian born, but we also have actually at the same time, you know, actually in the estimation we also have the Canadians who've actually studied uh, abroad. But I cannot think uh, quickly enough. But but I think you're right that it's a bit of a bound. But uh, let me let me proceed if we can. Uh, no, it's. Because it's indeed actually an important identification problem that uh, which is uh, completely uh, okay. Uh, let me. Oh, actually, I can widen these things again. So, uh, I think that would be the best way. Can you can you see the back? Okay. So this is actually just a straight uh, regression where uh, you know this is a standard control. You put a dummy for uh, that's men and women together. And you find just in the cross section that uh, the gap between uh, immigrants and the Canadian born is about, this is all logs, so that's uh, 11 log point uh, difference. And actually, just putting in the, uh, the location of study as, as dummies actually reduces this gap by about half. So essentially, the way of thinking about it is that uh, when you look at uh, an Indian immigrant who's or you know, a typical immigrant who's making like 11% less than a Canadian born. Uh, if that immigrant had been educated in Canada, instead, you know, this gap would uh, go down by half. And actually, if you look at the uh, maybe just a, a graph here, this is actually showing you these uh, location of study effects. Actually, we've grouped them a little bit in the analysis. We have some, some versions of them all where we essentially put a completely unrestricted set of uh, country dummies. But uh, what you do see is that for a reason, I, you know, I can't really believe that one for the UK. It's suggesting that quality of education in the UK is uh, much higher in Canada. So maybe it's back to the selection uh, issues. Or I'm actually a little bit concerned to that because the image the UK immigrants tend to be quite a bit older. Uh, in case I was not clear about that, here we're actually focusing on immigrants who came between the age of 15 and 29. Uh, but you know, we can be catching them at age 16 or uh, later on. So that could be uh, part of the explanation. But you know, otherwise, the results look pretty reasonable. You know, the US is right on the zero line. So it's essentially telling you that getting your degree in the US in Canada or in Australia and New Zealand uh, most of rest of Europe, I think it's uh, uh, Eastern Europe, rest of West, uh, Western Europe beside the, uh, the UK. And then, you know, as you get uh, further and further away, what you find is actually India and Pakistan are actually the, the countries where the premium is actually the, the largest. It's actually, that's another interesting case where introspection would uh, give you uh, the wrong answer because, you know, uh, there's I always have this weird thing about India because many of the people I know from India, uh, if they studied there, you know, they went to these very prestigious uh, colleges. But then at the same time, my development colleagues are telling me that the quality of basic education in India is just falling really, uh, low. So, uh, so essentially, that's what these results tend to say. So, yes. The, yeah, yeah, okay. You mean the, the country of uh, country of origin? Yeah, this one actually was just a straight straight one without the the country of origin. Uh, so when you put the country of origin, you know, it cuts down a, a little bit these effects, but not by uh, that much. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that's a good point. So it's kind of back to the question that uh, Fabian was uh, was asking um, earlier on. Because, uh, you know, certainly a prejudice, I mean, Phil Oriopoulos has done, you know, there's kind of a whole cottage industry of uh, these, uh, what do you call those, the audit, uh, yeah, yeah. And uh, certainly, he did find that in Canada, you know, if you just manipulate the CVs and uh, just put, the, you know, say a Chinese uh, sounding name, even with uh, a degree from McGill and everything, 
you do find that the callback rate is actually substantially uh, lower. So, so if you put these studies, you know, with that, it's suggesting that part of it is because so people have said that the callback is only one part of the uh, whole process. But uh, yeah, it's kind of hard to distinguish. Yeah. Yeah, okay, so basically, well, yeah, okay, I'll think about it because it's, um, yeah, I mean, we could actually, uh, I mean, the, um, we, we do have some results, um, we try to split that up by different age group, yeah, and work experience, yeah, no, we should do more than on that, you know, that, that's a good point. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no, no, that's that's actually a uh, very good suggestion. Um, yeah, we haven't looked so much into that, but uh, the accent, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah, well, that's basically, see the, see the problem in the cross-section, um, you know, the, the work experience uh, in Canada versus, there's a bit of an identification problem because, you know, if you look at, uh, so in one sense, work experience, it's almost just like age, you know, kind of how much time since you were first um, in, the, actually, maybe I can uh, go back here. So you see, we have some of these models where we separate the, the first model, we just see work experience, so that's essentially age minus when you should have completed your uh, your degree. But when we separate it between the Canadian experience and the foreign experience, in one sense, the Canadian experience is how much time you spend uh, in Canada still getting your uh, degree. So actually, if you were an immigrant, if you had gotten your degree in another country, you immigrate at age uh, 30. So now we're actually distinguishing, you know, how much time has elapsed since uh, age 30, and that's kind of the Canadian experience, while the uh, the foreign experience was the time that elapsed between when you completed your degree and when you immigrated to Canada. Yeah, gender is there, uh, but we don't have age in addition to that. So it's all. Yeah, well, actually, uh, we have actually some other models here where we uh, break it up by the uh, age of immigration, you know, putting both uh, dummies for age of immigration. Since I'm actually here at this table, maybe I can, uh, my uh, management of time is not always um, that great. I actually, here, you know, just to tell you, uh, when you actually look at all immigrants, you know, at first I was showing you only people who came between the age of 15 and uh, 29. Now if I actually put uh, everyone in, you know, you get actually not surprisingly is that the gap is uh, much higher. I didn't, sh I don't show you here what's happening for all the age groups, but you know, what you find is that uh, the later you come into Canada, the bigger the, the gap, uh, the gap is, even controlling for work experience, essentially uh, age and uh, things like that, and actually, you, so you see, you know, immigrants who came at the age of uh, 15 to 19. I mean, those who came before age 15, there's actually very little difference. Uh, 15 to 19, what you see, there's only a, a small gap, and then uh, I think you don't see the bottom of this. Uh, here is essentially whether you have the controls for location of study uh, or not, and not surprisingly, since pretty much everybody who came at age 15 to 19. Canadian education controlling for that doesn't matter. But you see, for instance, if you look at people who came age 30 to uh, 34, you know, the gap is really big, 30%. But actually, it goes down to about 18% if you uh, control for the location of study. So essentially, you know, the results kind of uh, go in the direction uh, <coughs> you would uh, expect since there's little impact here. Yeah. 
So uh, I'm not sure this did answer your uh, your question. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Well, actually, uh, Javier has been doing more work on that one for a quarter, where he was losing, uh, using some of the longitudinal data set that we have on uh, on immigrants, and, and actually, and and also seeing, you know, what was the impact of uh, changing job uh, for immigrants and uh, Canadian born, and you s certainly see that actually back to this mismatch thing that at first immigrants tend to be. Uh, have a worse match in terms of occupation given uh, given their uh, their education, and there's actually a bit of uh, convergence, you know, kind of catching up to uh, that extent. So, in, if you look at okay, are they getting closer to the occupation? Let's say if you train as an engineer, you know, are you getting closer to to start with a job in retail trade, and you get closer over time in being a, an engineer? There's actually a little bit of of that, but it's actually not not huge. Other, yeah? Yes, yeah. Yeah, actually, we do control here for the controls that we uh, have in the census about uh, language, and it's, um, it's very limited in the, the census. I mean, you know whether uh, knowledge of the official uh, language, uh, but there's actually relatively few people, if you actually report not knowing French or English, it's actually a very small fraction of the population, then you have actually a huge negative uh, impact. I mean, for some of the family, you know, the grandparents kind of uh, uh, stories, you could be uh, capturing some of those. So we actually uh, control for that. Uh, um, and, you know, you can do kind of better. You have information on mother tongue. Uh, to that, I can't remember if we control for that in that specification. But then actually it becomes a little bit tricky because it's highly correlated also with the, the country of uh, origin. But certainly the uh, knowledge of official language, we put that in the, the direction. Okay, where was I? Um, uh, let me actually uh, <coughs> keep uh, going through. I mean, as I was saying uh, before, I mean, the, the effect for uh, women is actually uh, quite a bit uh, bigger, you know, just putting the location of study uh, fixed effect explains uh, a much bigger part of the, the change than uh, for men, where it still cuts by uh, three percentage points, but uh, it's actually uh, more limited. Let me now uh, show you the difference it makes to have these. Uh, uh, and, and actually, yeah, I should say because uh, I didn't answer. Um, questions uh, very well uh, earlier, but these are actually uh, models where we compare this amputation procedure. So that's on the right, you know, with the direct measurement that we have. And actually all these models uh, use a full set of uh, country of origin uh, uh, effects. Okay, so then, you know, you can think of it as really being kind of this difference in difference. So we have uh, a main effect linked to your country of origin. And within country of origin, some people got their education in their home countries. Uh, others uh, didn't. And here, actually, the way we uh, do the analysis, we essentially put you know dummies for uh, the base, actually having a trade certificate. And here, I think, say, a CEGEP, um, you know, a, a tertiary degree, but less than education, bachelor's degree above bachelor. So if you look at the effect of bachelor degrees about uh, 40 percentage point, uh, and you see that in general here, you know, just interacting whether you got foreign education or not, it cuts by about 8 percent, say, the return to a bachelor degree. Uh, when you actually use this imputation procedure, it doesn't actually have such a dramatic impact on, uh, on this one here. You know, it cuts it a, a little bit. But if you look at the main effects, uh, I mean, you could have actually a fully interacted model here where I would interact each level of education with each uh, country of origin here. It's actually a little more, uh, uh, <coughs> a little less parsimonious. So we have actually dummies for the, the countries where you got your education and then this interaction uh, here. 
But you can see, uh, so for instance, in the case of India, Pakistan, and there's a few other uh, similar countries there, you see that actually making a huge difference. When you use this imputation procedure, uh, it looks like having, uh, having a study in India has only a 5% impact, but when you have the direct measure, you see that the impact is actually much bigger, much more like 16%. Uh, and let me actually uh, show you a figure that's also uh, related to uh, some of the things we were talking about. Uh, so this is actually from these models where you have actually the country of, these are actually now the country of origin uh, effects with and without controls, apology once again if you don't see in the back, but that's with or without control for the location of study fix effect, okay? So uh, this is just kind of a wage regression where I throw in a dummy for each of the country of origin. Here I show you a slightly more grouped uh, version of that, so you see a very big negative effect, for instance, of Pakistan, India, uh, China, Philippines, etc. And by the time you get to the, the effect of being from the uh, UK, Western Europe, it's a bit negative in the US, but much closer to uh, zero. And here you see what happens uh, when you actually uh, include the location of study fixed effect. So essentially, you know, Pakistan goes from having about a 40% negative penalty to uh, something which is more like 20%. So what, what is that actually saying? It's saying, well, if you're from Pakistan, but you have a Kenyan degree, you're going to earn 20% less than uh, Kenyan-born uh, workers. While if you actually uh, have a Pakistan degree, you know, then the negative premium is going to be actually uh, much bigger. So, you know, in one sense, it's showing that, back to this prejudice uh, discussion, uh, it may be that if you're from another country, even having a Canadian degree is not quite as uh, valued, but still, it's much more valued than uh, a degree from a uh, country. Um, okay. Yeah. Yeah, 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 that's right. You know, the flats. Yeah, yeah, that's actually, uh, that's a very good idea. Uh, on the flat part. Yeah, because that's always kind of a cheap way of. Uh, yeah, 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 okay. No, that's that's an excellent suggestion, actually. Flat part of the uh, profile, yeah. So it can always be a little tricky because you, uh, you actually do find that if you come to Canada at age 35, you're still going to have actually some growth in your for uh, you who arrived yeah, yeah yeah that's right yeah then I've been in Canada for at least 15 years and uh, okay 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 no that's an excellent uh, uh, yeah so let me actually uh, end because we're uh, pretty much done uh, with this uh, field of study uh, thing I was mentioning so uh, so here what I'm estimating is kind of a big regression where now I've actually used some field of study effects. And I'm actually not showing you all the, the results, uh, just a, a couple of the field of study. So actually uh, think of this, since I've came in this regression, that's kind of the uh, using humanities and arts as the excluded uh, category. Uh, what's the effect of the different field of study? So for instance, actually, uh, Having a degree in education, you tend to earn about 15% more than degrees in humanities and, and arts. Uh, and then you have the interactions between this field of study and where you got uh, your degree. And it's uh, quite interesting. Let me just contrast those two, you know, computer science, math, and physics. Uh, so big premium, about 22%. And then the negative impact of having a degree from Eastern Europe, for instance, you know, having your Polish uh, programmer, uh, actually, uh, you know, if you're just in the, uh, you know, an educator coming from Poland, uh, will have a big negative penalty, but in one sense, a computer programmer or mathematician, it's actually uh, only marginally significant in that case. It's actually a 4% effect. And, uh, and same thing, you know, from India, Pakistan, or or China. I mean, it's a little larger for India and Pakistan, but still, what you find is that the, the negative penalty is much uh, smaller than for a field like uh, education. So that's actually suggesting it's not all just discrimination 
prejudice, but it could be that uh, are the skills that you're getting more country specific? And I like to think of Matt as the extreme example where you know, it's not really a, a country a specific one. The other interesting one, uh, we always talk about doctors, but if you here look at this health assistance category, which is more nurses, uh, assistant nurses, uh, et cetera, so you're Filipino nurses, for instance. Uh, lots of them in both Canada and the uh, United States. And, and actually what's interesting is that this, this is another case where it seems that the skills are uh, fairly portable in the sense that there's a big positive premium, but uh, you know the, the skills seem to be uh, highly uh, portable. Well, actually, uh, business here, you know, I'm sure you cannot see anything, and that's <laughs> going to be the last thing I'm going to be saying. But you know, same thing if you have a degree in business, finance, marketing. Uh, you see actually once again a big negative premium if you study in Eastern Europe, uh, communist marketing, uh, whatever, from these are older immigrants, remember? Uh, but um, so that's actually uh, the, the negative premium is actually quite big, in, uh, which means that the human capital is much less transferable. Uh, I don't know if these differences can get at some of the selections. Uh, you mentioned early on, uh, I'll have to think uh, more about it, but I understand that I'm uh, out of time. I've already mentioned, uh, fortunately, these uh, results uh, earlier on. Uh, but let me actually just uh, stop here because I'm sure many of you have.